Unit 1.1 Practice Problems. A solution is prepared by adding 16 grams of methanol with a molar mass of 32 and 90 grams of water with a molar mass of 18. The molar mass of methanol in this solution is closest to which of the following? So we're going to go ahead and convert these mass uh, numbers to moles. And so we are going to divide our uh, number of grams given divided by our molar mass. The molar mass was provided, so that makes that pretty easy. 16 divided by 32 is going to give you 0.5 moles of methanol. And then we have 90 grams of water divided by our molar mass of water of 18. And that is going to give us a molar uh, mole count of five. So five moles of water. Now for the mole ratio, we're going to go ahead and have part over whole. The part that we are interested in is the methanol. So that's going to be on top. So five point, sorry, 0 0.5 moles of the methanol is gonna be on top. And then it's going to be over the total number of moles. So five plus 0.5 gives me 5.5. So 0.5, divided by 5.5 is going to give me 0 0.090909, et cetera, et cetera. And then as we can see here, we are only rounding to the uh, tens place since we had an addition here. Uh, so the least number of decimal places is what we're going to use. That was one decimal place. So look over to see if I need to round up. Nine does make me round up. So zero point, oops. 0.1 is going to be the number that I'm looking for, and that has the correct number of sig figs as well, since we had an addition there. So A is going to be my answer choice. A solution of methanol, uh, CH3OH, in water is prepared by mixing together 128 grams of methanol and 108 grams of water. The mole fraction of methanol in this solution is closest to, so basically we're repeating the exact same steps. I'm gonna go ahead and steal the molar masses that we had in the previous question since we're using the same two compounds and that makes my life easier. And so again, we are going to find the number of moles by dividing the total grams uh, by the molar mass. So the methanol's number of grams is 128. Methanol's mass as given in the previous problem was 32. So 128 divided by 32 gives me four. And then 108 divided by 18 which again, I'm stealing the mass from the previous problem, gives me six. So again, we're going to have part over whole. So we are going to have four as our number of moles for the methanol divided by the total. So six plus four gives me 10. So four divided by 10 gives me 0 0.40, which is answer choice D. How many carbon atoms are contained in 2.8 grams of uh, C2H4? So we're going to go ahead and set up a dimensional analysis problem. So we are looking for uh, atoms of carbon that are within 2.8 grams of C2H4. So we were not provided the molar mass for this, so we are going to have to go ahead and uh, get that molar mass. So the molar mass for carbon is going to be approximately 12, we have two of them, and then hydrogen is gonna be approximately one and we have four of them. So that's 24 plus four, so a mass of 28 grams per mole, approximately. So 28 grams is one mole of that entire compound. I don't want moles of the entire compound. I am looking for atoms of carbon. So I need to get out of the compound and into carbon. So for every one mole of the compound, I have two moles of carbon contained within. And then I'm going to get out of moles and into atoms. So I'm going to go ahead and use Avogadro's number. So for every one mole, of carbon, there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. 
of carbon. And then I could go ahead and plug that into my calculator. And that gave me uh, one point two zero four four times 10 to the 24th or E24. And so my closest answer here is going, oh, sorry, E23, my apologies. Misread my calculator for a second. Got so excited about all the fours. Uh, E23. So that uh, is going to get me to answer choice A. Uh, I'm glad I noticed that I accidentally misread my calculator here as uh, uh, times 10 to the 24th was an answer. So be super careful um, and re make sure you check your calculator like I did to check any um, incidental errors. In one mole of potassium zirconium sulfate trihydrate, K4ZrSO4 for 3H2O, there are, and then we have um, our number of atoms. So we have one mole of this, so that should be pretty easy counting here. Um, and uh, we have some that are going to be expanded and some that are not. So I can see that I have uh, four potassiums for every one mole of this compound. So I can see that uh, we have one mole and that is the Avogadro's number to convert from uh, moles to atoms, and there are four per compound. So this is looking pretty good, but I'm gonna check to make sure that I uh, am not missing anything else. Zirconium, uh, there is only one per one mole. This says that there are uh, four moles of zirconium atoms. There's only one per one mole of this compound, so no. Then for sulfur, this four is going to distribute in. And so I'm going to have four total sulfurs and I'm going to have 16 total oxygens. So I should see four times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. I just see 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So I forgot to distribute, so that's not going to be the correct answer. Oxygen, again, this four distributes in, so four times four is 16. Uh, they did not distribute in. Uh, and so that is not going to be my correct answer. And then my last choice here is going to be, um, oh, also it's not correct because the uh, oxygen here was not accounted for at all um, within answer choice D. It ignored the oxygen within the water. Uh, next up we have hydrogen and we have a grand total of six for every one mole of this entire complex. And so this was not distributed correctly. So A is not correct either. So the only answer choice that was correct was answer choice C. Now that happened to be the very first element within the complex. Uh, and so I found that answer choice uh, very quickly, but again, saw how we eliminated all the other answer choices. So if you had just started looking at hydrogen first, uh, you're just gonna, again, make sure that you are distributing all of the uh, all of the subscripts appropriately. A student has a one gram sample of each of the following, sodium chloride, potassium bromide, and potassium chloride. Which of the following lists of samples in order of increasing number of moles within the sample? So we are going to be looking for what is going to have the lowest molar mass because that means that uh, a one gram sample is going to have the greatest number of moles here. So chlorine is going to have a mass of approximately 35. Sodium is going to have a mass of approximately 23. Okay, and then potassium is going to have a mass of 39, approximately. And bromine is going to have a mass of uh, approximately 80. Okay, so we are looking for what is going to have the smallest molar mass. Um, and that will mean that we can fit more of them within one gram, okay? So uh, that is going to be sodium chloride is going to be the uh, greatest number of moles that I can fit within one gram. And so I'm going to go ahead and eliminate any answer choice that does not include sodium chloride as my uh, one that is going to be the greatest number of moles, and that is everything other than answer choice D. So that does very quickly go ahead and eliminate that there. Um, and I can just go ahead and make sure that everything else is in the correct order as well. Uh, potassium bromide is going to be the heaviest compound, and therefore I'm going to be able to fit 
uh, the least amount of them within one gram, and so it should be the least. You can see that between answer choices A and D, those are just reversed, so make sure that you are uh, going ahead and reading the question carefully and that we are looking for an increasing number of moles so that you don't accidentally uh, reverse your order. A student obtains a sample of a pure solid compound in addition to Avogadro's number. Which of the following must the student know in order to determine how many molecules are within the sample? So um, in order to determine uh, how many atoms are within the sample, we are going to need to know what that sample is, okay, and uh, how much of it we have. So I need the mass of the sample. And so all answer choices except for answer choice D include that as a provision. I need to know how much of that sample I have in order to figure out how many atoms I have within it. Next up, I need to know what the sample is. And so that means I am looking for the identification of the compound, the molar mass of the compound. That allows me to go from the grams to atoms, okay? I need um, my initial mass of sample, and then I'm going to need the molar mass of that compound in order to get to uh, uh, the number of moles. Then I can use Avogadro, and that will get me to atoms. Okay, so I need the molar mass of the compound because I need to know what the compound is so that I can go ahead and convert from mass to moles so that I can use Avogadro to get to atoms. So answer choice C is going to be my uh, best answer choice there. Which of the following numerical expressions gives the number of particles within 2.0 grams of neon? So first up, I'm going to need to uh, go ahead and uh, identify what I'm going to need to solve this. I need to get out of grams. Anytime you see a mass, you are going to need your molar mass. Your molar mass of neon can be found on your periodic table. There's no compound there, so you can just go ahead and steal the number directly off the periodic table. And it looks like the molar mass of neon is approximately 20. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of anything that doesn't include 20 at all. That's just going to be answer choice A. Uh, and then I need the number of particles. That means I need Avogadro's number, and Avogadro's number is included in all of these. So that looks like uh, the next part that I can go ahead and eliminate. And then um, I want to know how many particles are specifically within this amount of neon. And so if I don't have that number involved in my math at all, then that doesn't answer that question. So answer choice B is also going to be eliminated for that reason. Now I'm looking between C and D. Now here, um, we are just differentiating between whether or not we put our uh, mass at the top or our molar mass at the top. It may be most helpful to go ahead and expand this out into the type of stoichiometry that you are used to. And so I'm gonna go ahead and say that I'm looking for the number of atoms in 2.0 grams. Then I need to get out of grams and into moles. And then out of moles and into particles. And I can go ahead and see, oh, hey, my two grams was in the numerator. And so that is going to be answer choice C. I don't have to solve the problem. I just need to identify which of the mathematical setups was correct. According to the information in the table shown, a one gram sample of which of the following contains the greatest mass of oxygen? Uh, so I'm going to need to look at what the masses of my respective uh, metals are within this. And so here we have uh, two sodiums. Sodium is going to be approximately 23 each, and so that would give me a mass amount of 46 um, per one mole. And so 62 minus 46, that gives me uh, 16. 
which makes sense that it's a mass of oxygen. Um, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and say for magnesium, magnesium's mass is 24. Potassium, there are two potassiums, each are 39 approximately. That's going to give me uh, 78. Okay, each are one. You're noticing a pattern here. And then we have calcium here where we have a mass of 40. Okay, so each we have the mass of oxygen just being the same here. So this wasn't helpful, right? Um, instead, what we are looking for is going to be the proportion, where 16 divided by the total mass is going to be the greatest amount, because I'm looking for um, what has the greatest mass of oxygen. But if you just found the actual mass of oxygen within all of these compounds, it's the same, because there's just one oxygen per compound here. However, I'm given a one gram sample, which means that the uh, compound that has the lowest molar mass, I'm going to be able to fit the most of that compound within one gram. And my proportion of oxygen to the total molar mass is going to also be the greatest. So magnesium oxide, you can identify that that is going to be uh, my answer choice based off of just that it has the lowest molar mass. You could also identify that it is going to be my answer choice based off of the proportion that's there. So 16 divided by 40, it's going to be a larger number than 16 by 32 or 16 by 94 or 16 by 56, et cetera. Okay, so that magnesium oxide is going to be my best answer choice because it uh, will contain the most oxygen within that very small mass sample of the compound.